Hi everybody. Today I have a new plugin for you and I have an update that feels like a new plugin in a way and some other updates. So let's start with a big update. And this can be found in the Tape Recorder Series 2. Let's just hear it with a simple drum loop. And I hope you could hear that the bass drum is kind of distorted. Let's switch that off and hear it in clean. And again with the tape effect. This is the way it behaved all the time, because if you hit it with really hard levels, which I do now, this in drive and tape age really distort the signal. But with the new update, we can give it headroom. That's why it says headroom here. We have this little adjuster for the headroom. So I turn down the level and don't worry, it is um, loudness compensated. So I turn that down by 14 dB and now it shouldn't distort. And now we hear noise and that's because the internal recording level for the tape is so low that we have this noise. Of course, we can go and denoise it here. Let's hear that again. So you see, you can really play around with the settings, with the headroom and the drive and the tape and denoiser in combination with the um, tape speed. Now you have opportunities for really get a combination you like. But honestly, that was just a small thing because the big thing is that you can switch to Tape Machine B. And Tape Machine B gives you a completely different tape flavor, which means I kind of wrote another plugin that does tape things and put that in the old Tape Recorder Series 2 plugin. The controls are the same, the sound isn't. So again, let's hear tape A. I don't know if you could hear that now in the video, maybe with headphones on, but of course, when you update the plugins, you can try it all yourself. And on Tape Machine B, we can switch the tape from Tape A to Tape B. And as a quick reference, we could say the old algorithm for this tape plugin was a kind of lo-fi effect with saturation and tape old distortion things, while the Tape B is a kind of studio tape effect, which gives you a studio tape machine sound signature, while Tape A is a rather clean tape and tape B is a tape with a lot of character. It especially gives you a lot of air bond. So the highest of the higher frequencies getting a bit enhanced and silky and the sub bass frequency range gets extended. So let's hear it once again before we get to the next update. The next update can be found in the TEQ and the TEQ emulates a special equalizer from a special mixer and it also gives a very low noise profile. And now with the update, you can switch that off. So noise from low noise to no noise. And for you to immediately see if you have noise on or off, we have different colors on the knobs. And then there are smaller updates in other plugins. For example, the new treasure plugin. And yes, it's called new treasure, not this treasure. And I'm saying that because some people said they can't find the new treasure plugin because they were looking for a this treasure. Well, this plugin has a smoother metering now. Another example for smaller updates is the orange EQ, which is a regular EQ. And you can switch that to a linear phase equalizer. And with the update, there came some smaller bugs, which only appears if you group several instances of the plugin and all that stuff. No one reported these bugs, but I fixed them. And there were a lot of smaller fixes in a lot of the other plugins. But now let's come to the new one. And this is the Blue Lexicon Series 2. It looks a bit like the Red Lexicon Series 2. But the main difference is that the Red Lexicon is a feedback delay network. And the Blue Lexicon is a kind of a feedback filter network. That's a different approach of how you make an algorithm for reverbs. And of course, that's a different flavor. Let's bypass this red one and hear the blue one with the whole algorithm. Here I'm now in the reverb tab, so we can adjust the pre-delay and the size of the room. 
and the dumping, which means how fast the high frequencies drop over the reverb tail, which is the gap between the early reflections and the reverb tail, of course the reverb tail length and the stereo width of the reverb. And just as it is in the other lexicon, we can choose from ambience of a room, the small hall, hall and plate reverbs. Let's hear the ambient. And now with the plugin bypassed. Go over to the room. Maybe with less pre-delay and less gap. A longer reverb tail. Let's hear small hall. Now the hall algorithm again. And the plate. And this sounds a bit metallic, which lies in the nature of the algorithm itself. But hey, sometimes it's just what you need. In addition to the reverb tab, we have the filters tab where we can adjust a high pass filter and um, a low shelf filter and a high shelf filter and a low pass. Then we have these two equalizer filters. So these are full parametric equalizers with um, gain and frequency selection and of course the bandwidth. And finally here in the mix section, we can mix dry mix and now this is kind of grayed out because this is the early reflections mix and plate reverbs don't have early reflections. So here we can mix the early reflections in. Here we can choose the amount of the reverb tail and we can have in gain and out gain, which comes in handy when we use the ducker. The ducker is a kind of effect where the reverb tails drop in volume if we have direct signal and when the direct signal is gone the reverb tail comes up. And in the general tab we have parameters from the other tabs which are just for quick adjustment. So that's it for today. I hope you like it. Have fun with the plugins and bye bye.